Hello, this video is going to take you through how to graph a quadratic relation using transformations. So this form of the equation, y equals a times x minus h all squared plus k is known as vertex form of a quadratic relation. And in this course, we've already looked at what standard form looks like. Standard form is written as y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And we've looked at factored form, which is y equals a times x minus r times x minus s, where r and s are the x-intercepts of that quadratic relation. So here we're talking about a third form for this equation for a quadratic relation, which is vertex form. And each of these values in vertex form tells us something about how the relation has changed from what we call our base graph of y equals x squared. So starting from y equals x squared, the a, the h, and the k in this equation for vertex form changes what the graph looks like. So first of all, the a value. If a is a value that's less than zero, then we know that a reflection in the x-axis occurs. If a is a value that is greater than one, or if a is a value less than negative one, then there's a vertical stretch by a factor of a. And if a is a value that's between negative one and positive one, except for zero, because if a is zero, then this would not be a quadratic relation, then there is a vertical compression by a factor of a. And in both the case of a vertical stretch and a vertical compression, uh, when we apply that transformation on the graph, we're going to be multiplying the y values by the factor of a. The h value in this equation tells us where the graph is shifting left or right, starting from y equals x squared. If h is a value greater than zero, then we shift to the right h units. And if h is a value less than zero, then we shift to the left h units. And here we have to keep in mind that the general form of this equation is x minus h. So when we're talking about the value of h, we're not including that minus sign. So it's just whatever the value of h is. So if this was, let's say, x minus 3, then h is 3, which means we shift to the right 3 units. If this was written as x plus 3 in the brackets, then in, in this format with a minus sign, we would write x plus 3 as x minus negative 3, in which case h is a negative value and we shift to the left. So there'll be more information on that as we get to some examples. And finally, the k value in this equation tells us where the, where the graph is shifting up or down. And if the k value is greater than 0, positive, then we shift up k units. And if k is less than zero, we shift down k units. And after these left and right shifts and up and down shifts are applied, the coordinates h comma k, again the h and the k from this vertex form equation, h comma k is the location of the vertex on the graph. Okay, let's get into some examples. So here we want to graph y equals x plus 4 all squared minus 2 using transformations from y equals x squared. So the first thing we're going to do is always draw out and start with our base graph. So our base graph is y equals x squared. If you need to, you can set up a table of values for that. Um, so substitute in different x values to get the corresponding y coordinates and you'll have a set of points that you can graph. The five points that we generally use for transformations for y equals x squared are the points 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, and on the other side, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 4. And that's because 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, negative 1 squared is also 1, 2 squared is 4, and negative 2 squared is also 4. Uh, if you want a little bit more detail to your transformed graphs, you can add another point on either side if you have space to do so with the grid that you have set up. So I could also add 3, 9, because 3 squared in this equation is 9, and the point negative 3, 9. Okay, so at least those five key points that are in the middle of this graph, but you can add another point on either side if you have space to do so. 
So then we draw a nice smooth curve through those points. And that's our graph of y equals x squared. Okay. So in general, we're going to draw that graph first anytime we're using transformations to draw another parabola. Okay, then we're going to list out the transformations that are happening based on this equation. So in this equation, our a value is 1. Now that's a hidden one. It wasn't initially written in there. Um, but that a value of 1 means that there is no reflection in the x-axis because a is a positive value. And there's no stretch or compression because the stretches and compressions only happen if a is either greater than 1 or if a is between 0 and 1. So we don't have to worry about any vertical stretches, compressions, or a reflection in the x-axis. This part of the equation here, that tells us that h is negative 4. Because remember, again, that the general form of this equation is x minus a number. So if I rewrite this as x minus something, I would rewrite it as x minus negative 4. And so the h value is actually this negative 4. So if h is negative 4, that indicates that we have a shift to the left 4 units. Okay. The k value is negative 2. And so a k value of negative 2 indicates a shift down 2 units. So what we want to do is take all of the key points that we've graphed for y equals x squared and shift each key point to the left 4 and down 2. So I'm going to start with the point at the vertex. So I shift that point to the left 4 and down 2 units. It is now here at negative 4 comma negative 2. Remember we said that we could find the location of the vertex from this form as well. So we know our vertex should be at negative 4, comma, negative 2. Okay. We continue applying these transformations to all of the other key points. So I'm going to go to 1, 1 next. So I take that point and I'm going to shift it to the left 4 units and down 2. And I get this new point. We call this the image point of 1, comma, 1. Okay, then I'm going to go to the point 2, 4, and I'm going to take that point and shift to the left 4. So I'm just counting on the grid here and down 2. So I get this new image point. Okay, so that's the right hand side of our parabola. If I want a little bit more accuracy, I can transform the point 3, comma 9 as well. So to the left 4 and down 2. So that point, the image point of that point will be here. And that gives me the right-hand side of this new transformed parabola. To get the left-hand side, I simply take the key points from the left-hand side of y equals x squared, and I count out four units left and two units down. So for each of those points, one, two, three, four left and two down. So I get this image point here at negative five, negative one. Okay, the next point, one, two, three, four, one, two down. I get this image point, and we're seeing that it's symmetrical to the image points that I've already got on the right-hand side of this parabola. And finally, the point negative 3, 9 to the left 4 and down 2 to get this image point. And again, I draw a smooth curve through the left-hand side of this parabola. Make sure you label that parabola with the equation. So the equation was y equals x plus 4 all squared minus 2. Okay, so this is what you're going to show for your solutions when you're graphing transformations. You're going to graph the parabola, the base parabola, y equals x squared. You're going to list out the transformations that are happening in words. And you're going to show that transformed graph. Uh, at the end. Make sure that your graph is labeled with a scale, your axes are labeled x and y, and your equations are labeled. Okay, here's another example. So here we're going to graph y equals negative a half times x minus 3 all squared. So this negative indicates that we have a reflection in the x-axis. 
the one half indicates a vertical compression because that's a value that's less than one. So a vertical compression. And we say that vertical compression is by a factor of a half. And that actually indicates that we're going to multiply y values by a half in order to accomplish that transformation. And inside the brackets here, we have x minus 3, which means our h value is 3, positive 3, which indicates a shift to the right 3 units. So here we have three different transformations that we're going to apply. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph the reflection and the compression together as one kind of in-between step. And then we're going to take that graph and shift everything to the right three units. If you feel comfortable with it, you can combine all three of these uh, and apply them all at the same time and just graph the base graph of y equals x squared and then the final transformed graph. But I'm going to split this up into two steps. So a reflection in the x-axis means that any points that were above the x-axis are now going to be below the x-axis but the same distance from the x-axis. It also means that we would be multiplying the y-coordinates by negative 1. That will accomplish a reflection in the x-axis. So if I'm multiplying the y-values by negative 1 for the reflection, and I'm multiplying the y-values by a half to accomplish the, uh, the compression, then overall I want to multiply the y-values by negative a half. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do first. So I'm going to start at the vertex again, so 0, 0. For that point, the y-coordinate is 0. And if I multiply 0 by negative 1 half, it stays at 0. So that point, the image point, is unchanged from the original graph. Okay, next I'm going to go to the point 1, 1. The y-coordinate is 1. If I multiply that by negative 1 half, I get negative a half. So for the same x coordinate, the y coordinate is now negative a half. Okay, moving to the next point, 2, comma 4. The y coordinate for this point is 4. Multiplying that by negative a half is negative 2. So here's the image point. Okay, on the other side of the parabola, uh, going to the point negative 1, 1. The y-coordinate is 1, multiplying by negative 1 half, gives negative 1 half. And next is negative 2, 4. The y-coordinate is 4, multiplying that y-coordinate by negative 1 half, gives negative 2. And again, we can see that symmetric property with the transformed graph that we're drawing in here, uh, where we've got symmetric points on either side of the axis of symmetry that goes through the vertex. So again, for a little bit more accuracy, you could also plot the image points of 3, 9 and negative 3, 9. But at the very least, uh, you want to get the transformations for those five key points in the middle. And then draw a smooth curve through those points. So this is not the final transformed graph yet. This is just the graph after those first two transformations. So we've now accomplished the reflection in the x-axis and the vertical compression by a factor of a half. So to complete this graph, we want to still shift this to the right three units. So now I'm going to start with the green graph that was already there. And I'm going to switch to orange. So we're going to graph this last transformation in the color orange. I'm going to take each of the key points from the green graph and shift to the right three units to get the orange graph, which will be the graph of this relation that we had at the top here. So I'm going to start at the vertex, shift the vertex to the right three units. The image point is here at 3, 0. Okay, next point, shift to the right three units. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for all of the key points from the green graph. Just take each one and count three spaces to the right on the graph. 
And that is my final transformed graph. So again, I'm going to make sure I have the equation for that final transformed graph as well as the equation labeled for that base graph. If you wanted to label the in-between step, which is the green graph, that would be the graph where I've only done the reflection and the vertical compression. So that graph is, is the graph of y equals negative a half x squared. So that's without the shift to the right three units in that equation. Okay, we're going to do one more example. I'm going to do this one a little bit differently just to give you another option for how to graph parabolas from vertex form. So in this option, we're going to start by plotting the vertex of the transformed graph, and then we will apply the stretch or compression or reflection factor. All right, so you don't have to use this option if you don't want to, um, but it, it gives you another option. So here from this equation, we can see that the vertex is going to be located at negative one comma two. So that's H comma K. H is negative one, K is positive two. So I'm gonna plot the new vertex at negative one comma two. So that point is here. Okay, so now the only thing in this equation I haven't applied is that a value of 3. So since a is positive, I don't have to worry about a reflection. A reflection would indicate that starting from this vertex, the parabola would be opening down instead of opening up. Here, a is positive, so I know I'm going to get a parabola that's opening up. Now on our base parabola, we know that from the vertex, we go over to the right one, and up one to get to the next point. But if but that that happens if my a value is equal to one. If my a value is equal to three, that means from my vertex, I'm going to go over to the right one and up three to get to the next point. So I know that I can plot a point here. That's going to be another point that's on my transformed problem. In addition to that, if I go from the vertex to the left one and up three, that point will also be on the problem. Okay, I'm gonna switch colors to do this next step. So going back to the base parabola again, from the vertex, if I go over to the right two, I would have to go up four to get to the next point on the problem. So on my transformed graph, if I start at the vertex and go to the right two and up, um, not four, but now three times four, which is 12. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, that that point will be a point on my parabola. And same thing on the left-hand side. If I go over to the left two, and up 12, that point will also be on the problem. So I can use this uh, spacing between points to count out to see where the other points on my problem are. So again, on the base curve, on the base graph of y equals x squared, from the vertex, I go over 1, up 1. If I multiply that by the a value of 3 here on my transformed graph, I go over 1, up 3. Back to the base graph. If I go over one from the, sorry, over two from the vertex up four, then I multiply that by the a value of three on the new graph, and I start at the vertex, go over two up twelve. All right. So just so we can see this final graph, I'm going to draw the blue curve through that final transform graph. So we could have also gotten this graph from using the same procedure that we used on the previous two slides, uh, where we, instead of starting with the vertex, we started with the graph of y equals x squared and took each key point and applied the transformations to it.